Lonnie George Johnson was born October 6, 1949, in Mobile, Alabama. His father, a World War II veteran, worked as a civilian driver at nearby Air Force bases, and his mother worked in a laundry and as a nurse's aide. During the summer, both of Johnson's parents picked cotton on his grandfather's farm. Johnson's father, a skilled handyman, taught his six children to build their own toys out of both interest and economic necessity. Johnson and his father created a pressurized chinaberry shooter out of bamboo shoots when he was a young boy. At the age of 13, Johnson hooked up a lawnmower engine to a go-kart he built out of junkyard scraps and raced it down the highway until the cops stopped him. Johnson aspired to be a famous inventor and, during his adolescence, became increasingly curious about how things worked and more ambitious in his experiments, sometimes to the detriment of his family. Lonnie tore up his sister's baby doll to see what made the eyes close, his mother later remarked. Another time, he almost burned down the house when he tried to cook rocket fuel in one of his mother's saucepans, and the mixture exploded. Growing up in Mobile during the era of legal segregation, Johnson attended Williamson High School, an all-black institution, where he was told not to aspire to anything other than a career as a technician, despite his precocious intelligence and creativity. Nonetheless, inspired by the story of renowned African-American inventor George Washington Carver, Johnson pursued his dream of becoming an inventor. Johnson, nicknamed The Professor by his high school friends, represented his school at a 1968 science fair sponsored by the Junior Engineering Technical Society, JETS. The fair was held at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, where Governor George Wallace had attempted to prevent two black students from enrolling by standing in the auditorium doorway only five years prior. Johnson, the only black student in the competition, debuted his compressed air-powered robot, the Linex, which he had painstakingly built from junkyard scraps over the course of a year. To the dismay of university officials, Johnson won first place. The only thing anybody from the university said to us during the entire competition, Johnson said in a subsequent interview, was goodbye and y'all drive safe now. After graduating with Williamson's last segregated class in 1969, Johnson received a scholarship to Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in 1973, and a master's degree in nuclear engineering two years later. After earning his degrees, Johnson joined the United States Air Force and rose to prominence in the government's scientific establishment. He was assigned to the Strategic Air Command, where he worked on the stealth bomber program. Johnson then joined NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in 1979, where he worked as a systems engineer on the Galileo and Cassini missions to Jupiter and Saturn, before returning to the Air Force in 1982. Despite his busy schedule, Johnson continued to pursue his own inventions in his spare time. One of his long-term pet projects was an eco-friendly heat pump that used water instead of Freon. Johnson finished a prototype one night in 1982 and decided to test it in his bathroom. He aimed the nozzle into his bathtub, pulled the lever, and a powerful stream of water poured directly into the tub. Johnson's instantaneous and instinctive reaction, which has since been shared by millions of children worldwide, was pure delight. After another seven years of tinkering and tireless sales pitching, during which he left the Air Force to start his own business, Johnson sold his device to the Laramie Corporation in 1989. The power drencher initially failed to make a significant commercial impact, but after additional marketing efforts and a name change, the Super Soaker became a huge success. It surpassed $200 million in sales in 1991 and has consistently ranked among the world's top 20 best-selling toys. According to the Strong National Museum of Play, Laramie and Hasbro Inc., which bought the company in the mid-1990s, sold approximately 200 million Super Soakers in over 175 variations. Sales are estimated to be around $1 billion. Hasbro settled with Johnson for $73 million in 2013. From 2007 to 2012, the inventor sought additional royalty payments based on toy sales. The Super Soaker entered the National Toy Hall of Fame in 2015. 
Johnson founded Johnson Research and Development in response to the Super Soaker's success, and the company went on to acquire dozens of patents. Some of his inventions, such as a ceramic battery and hair rollers that set without heat, were commercially successful. Others, such as a diaper that plays a nursery rhyme when soiled, failed to gain traction. Lonnie Johnson in his Atlanta lab, October 2008. His company focuses on battery technology and the Johnson Thermoelectric Energy Converter. Another of Johnson's inventions attempted to address far more pressing issues, the Johnson Thermoelectric Energy Converter, JTEC, which aimed to create an advanced heat engine capable of converting solar energy into electricity twice as efficiently as existing methods. He believed that a successful version of the JTEC could make solar power competitive with coal, thereby realizing the dream of efficient, renewable solar energy. Johnson's initial pitches sparked interest, and he eventually received much-needed funding from the Air Force to continue working on his project. Johnson's invention of the JTEC earned him the Popular Mechanics Breakthrough Award in 2008. More recently, he has collaborated with the Palo Alto Research Center, Park, in California on further development. In October 2017, Johnson stated that the project was on hold for a while while he worked on developing new battery technology. Four years later, in November 2021, JTEC Energy Inc. announced that it had created two working models of the converter aimed at harnessing waste heat below 200 degrees Celsius. This is a fantastic achievement for our team. It's gratifying to see the vision I've had for the past 20 years come true, Johnson said. If Johnson is successful in perfecting the JTEC, he has the potential to become one of the most important figures in the green technology revolution. According to Paul Werbos of the National Science Foundation, Johnson's work is as significant as discovering a new continent. You don't know what's there, but you're eager to find out. It could be the best thing on Earth. In addition to his work with the JTEC, Johnson co-founded Johnson Battery Technologies, Inc., which manufactures custom batteries for the government and private industry. The company has focused its efforts on developing a new generation of rechargeable batteries that provide more energy in a smaller package. In addition to his groundbreaking scientific work and inventions, Johnson is the board chairman of the Georgia Alliance for Children and a member of the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, a mentoring organization for high school and college students. In 2011, he was inducted into Alabama's Engineering Hall of Fame. Johnson was officially inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame on May 5, 2022, at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. The honor is further motivation to keep experimenting and exploring, he said. According to his website, Johnson has also served as a trustee for the Boys and Girls Club of America and a board member for the Chasing the Dream Foundation, which was founded by baseball legend Hank Aaron. Johnson lives in Atlanta's Sweet Auburn neighborhood with his wife, Linda Moore. He has four children, whose names have not been revealed.